We start off with the latest on the deadly shooting at the Allen Premium Outlets over the weekend. As we mentioned here at the top of this newscast, it had been days since we had heard from investigators, but this afternoon we finally got a briefing from them. Investigative reporter Morgan Young was at that news conference this afternoon and joins us now live from Allen with an update. Morgan, uh, fill us in on some of the takeaways from the news conference. Well, yeah, Jason, in its first press conference, and like you said, the nearly 72 hours since this happened, DPS was able to give us more information about the man who stole and affected so many lives on Saturday. Perhaps the most stunning piece of information that came out this afternoon is that Mauricio Garcia had eight weapons with him on Saturday. Three of them were physically with him. Five of them were in his vehicle, and DPS says that all of these weapons were purchased legally. They said he did not have a criminal record. They were able to walk us through some of his Background. They said that in 2008 he was going through basic training with the Army, but was released shortly after, deemed unfit to serve. Now, they said more information about why that decision was made will come later, but they did confirm that he had mental health struggles. DPS says Garcia was also licensed to be a security guard in Texas, and that he had been a security guard in multiple places, but at this time, at the time of the shooting, that he had, did not have an up-to-date license. They said his license had expired, and he actually had not served as a security guard in a long time. They also said they had no reason to believe he had ever been a security guard at the Allen Premium Outlets. Law enforcement says the big question they are looking at right now is why? What was his motive? And while they say they do not have an answer to that, they did confirm that in the first few days of looking into who this person was, they do say they found he had racist and hateful beliefs. We do know that he had neo-Nazi ideation. He had patches, he had tattoos. Uh, even his signature, you know, verified that. That's one thing we do know. We are trying to get into his computer and on social media and find out, you know, whether he had any, anything that he'd publicized or been out. We're looking around, we're seeing what he's trying to find what we looked at and trying to get every the information we can. Now, despite this information, DPS says that they believe Garcia targeted this mall specifically, but did not target any specific group or any specific person. They said outside of this location, they called this shooting random. Of course, so many other questions that need answers here. I'll tell you, DPS only took about six questions from reporters this afternoon, but they are asking if anyone who was there has not given a statement, anyone who witnesses who might have more information, they are asking those people to reach out to them. Jason. All right, Morgan, thank you for that update today from Allen. Uh, as soon as he heard the gunshots, an Allen police officer who was at that outlet mall on an unrelated call started running to confront the shooter. And this afternoon, we're learning a little bit more about that officer through a statement. The officer's attorney said, in part, the officer sprinted toward high power rifle fire as everyone else ran away. He's a brave servant with a gentle heart that embodies the best the law enforcement profession has to offer. He's doing well and would appreciate privacy as he continues to process this life altering tragedy. And at that news conference today, they did not identify that officer respecting his wish for privacy right now. We have also learned the name of the last unidenti unidentified victim who was killed over the weekend. Texas DPS says it was 32-year-old Elio Cumana Rivas. We are working to learn more about him. So far, we only know that he was from Dallas. We know in times like these, uh, many of us can often feel very helpless, but if you are able, there is something you can do. You can contribute to the Allen Fund. To do so, all you have to do is scan this QR code that is on your screen right now. The Communities Foundation of Texas says the money that is collected will be directed to local nonprofits providing resources for the victims. You can also find that information and any other update that we get throughout the day at WFAA.com. We've got the full write up there on the victims, what we know about the shooter, and we've opened up a space there for you to share your thoughts on this shooting. We know it's not good to hold in feelings when we're dealing with tragic situations like this. So again, there is a place there for you to share what you're thinking. All of this is also available, by the way, on our mobile app too.